Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for January 11th, 2012. In this week's Five Minutes to Enlightenment, Now You See It, Now You Didn't, the growth of a nerve fiber is directed, a new method etches chips more easily, and we bring you some notable business news. Researchers at Cornell say they can cloak an event by creating a gap in a beam of light, having the hidden event occur as the gap goes by, and then stitching the beam back together. To create the temporal cloak, they used a technique called four-wave mixing, in which two beams of light, a signal and a pump, are sent together through an optical fiber. The time gap is created by bumping the wavelength of the signal up, and then by flipping the wavelength of the pump beam, bumping it down. The gap created was 15 picoseconds long and might be increased to up to 10 nanoseconds. Practical applications include fiber optic data transmission and data processing, such as inserting an emergency signal without interrupting the main data stream, or multitasking operations in a photonic computer. The work appears in the January 5th issue of Nature. Laser-driven spinning microparticles can direct the growth of nerve fiber, a discovery that could allow for directed growth of neuronal networks on a chip and improve methods for treating spinal or brain injuries. The study, which is the cover story of the January issue of Nature Photonics, is based on a hypothesis by Samarendra Mohanty of the University of Texas at Arlington that neurons can respond to physical cues in addition to chemical ones. His work led the University of California Irvine team of Professor Michael Burns to test the micromotors in guiding neurons. Burns' group is the first to demonstrate that neurons can be turned in a controlled manner by microfluidic flow, directing them to turn right or turn left. In the experiment, spinning microparticles created the flow, something that could be generated in the body by a tube carrying fluids. The UC Irvine researchers used laser tweezers to trap and spin a birefringent particle near axonal growth cones, which are the tips of neurons where connections are made with other neurons or cells. In lab experiments, the new method successfully turned the growing axon in a new direction almost half the time, and it has the potential to be used in vivo to direct regenerating axons to mediate brain and spinal cord repair. Mohanty's lab is now developing a new method that allows long-range optical guidance of neurons with 100% efficacy without the use of any additional external objects. A method developed at the University of Illinois chemically etches patterned arrays in gallium arsenide to make high-end optoelectronic devices easier to create. A semiconductor's electrical and optical properties are tuned through two common etching techniques, wet and dry. While silicon is most commonly used, materials in the 3,5 group, such as gallium arsenide, are more efficient in optoelectronic applications such as solar cells or lasers. The U of I group used metal-assisted chemical etching, or MAC-etch, a two-step wet etching process they had previously developed for silicon and applied it to gallium arsenide. Wet etching of high aspect ratio 3,5 nanostructure arrays could transform the fabrication of semiconductor lasers where surface grading is currently done by expensive dry etching, which causes surface damage. Next, they hope to demonstrate device fabrication, including distributed Bragg reflector lasers and photonic crystals. Fiber laser maker IPG Photonics will add 175 new employees as part of an $18 million plan to expand its facility by more than 100,000 square feet. That's with the help of $1.7 million in tax credits from Massachusetts, state officials said last week. Dr. Dietmar Wagner has been named head of the Laser Processing Systems Business Unit of Yen Optics Laser Material Processing Division. Wagner, a 25-year laser technology veteran, most recently served as managing director at Lazag AG in Switzerland. Wagner will also serve as the new general manager of Yen Optics Automation Technology Company, one of the two businesses within the Laser Material Processing Unit. Laser Quality Precision Optical Assemblies and Components Manufacturer Precision Optical has opened a new 42,000 square foot facility, more than twice the size of its previous plant in Costa Mesa, California. More than 100 guests attended the ribbon cutting ceremony last month, including members of the optics industry and local government officials. The company plans to expand its product base by offering lens manufacturing and assembly and infrared optics and coatings. Well, our iPad 2 giveaway is still going strong, and you can enter by sharing a link to this or any episode of Light Matters with a friend or colleague. So tell someone about an interesting story you saw on Light Matters, include a link to the show, and copy us at lightmatters@photonics.com, and maybe you'll win. You can also do that easily by clicking the link on our homepage at photonics.com. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you here next week with another five minutes of enlightenment.